Welcome to the Literally First Class Podcast, where I will teach you how to overcome anxiety and achieve somatic success. I'm your host, Carrie Ford. I'm a somatic success and holistic life coach here to bring humor, insight, and wisdom to the modern day woman that wants to feel alive in her daily life. You ready? Come on, I saved you a seat in first class. I just want to prepare you that this episode is literally pointless. (laughs) It's just updates. It's ramblings. It's musings. It's just for fucking fun, you know? So here in Atlanta, it's starting to warm up. It's mid-March. Flowers are blooming. There's like cherry blossoms everywhere. It's my like favorite, favorite time here in Atlanta. And it's right before all the fucking pollen coats everything. I mean, it's bad here to the point where you can't even open your windows. It's legit that bad. You can stand outside or you can drive your car in like, you know, after you just washed it and the car will be covered in pollen, a layer of it on your skin, on your hair. Like you want to hit that little thing on the vent, um, you know, circulation where it circulates only the the air in the car because you don't you don't want the pollen from outside coming in. That's how bad it is. So I'm enjoying pre-allergies. I actually never had allergies until I moved to Atlanta in 2012. And it's brutal, y'all. So I'm sitting here. I'm drinking my Cenogenix Accelerate. It's a raspberry flavor. And it's like a um, there's antioxidants, vitamin B, and some caffeine in there. So it's a really good pre-workout. But it's a lot more gentle than most pre-workouts. So, you know, you you can do a lot of things with it without losing sleep, essentially. So I'm drinking that. We are in the throes of planning so many things. What a full season. I mean, last fall, I talked to you guys about, you know, coming home or going into, I think it even was, the retreat at Zawatanejo, Mexico. And I was like, I mean, from, I mean, end of September, I think it was, when I spoke at Leanne Mosley's Rich Queen event in West Palm Beach, all the way through November. It was like a eight, nine week sprint. You know, I had breast explant surgery. I was flying all over the place. It was incredible and such a full, full season. I also had so many guest speaking opportunities um, and collaborations, which was amazing. But it it stretched me. It really did um, in a lot of ways, especially physically, obvious for obvious reasons, right? You like removed something from your body. So overall, I'm feeling good from the breast explant surgery. Still some of those weird symptoms with like itchiness or like the skin detoxing. And my neck is continuing to bother me a little bit. Again, these are residual things from the implants. These are these are things that are going to take some time to correct and to get out of my body. And I just thank God for the, the support of Cinegenics and all the supplements and like my whole concierge medical team that's helping me in real time pivot as needed. But here we are in the spring, and spring tends to be a busy time for my team anyway. Um, we made a new hire. We promoted some people. We have one. We have a new opt-in, a new um, really amazing playbook called the Limitless Leader Playbook. If you don't have that, it is amazing. It's free. It's three parts. Uh, it includes videos and a beautiful um, playbook, like I mentioned. And that helps you move beyond and through upper level limits and helps you identify them so that you know when you're self-sabotaging on a somatic level. Um, So that's really cool. We also have at the time of this recording, um, and you will still have some time to to get in this room, but you're going to want to come to this because this is something that women have literally cried to me and said, I wish I knew this a decade ago. I wish I had this years ago. I've had clients say, like, this was the missing piece. And what that piece is, is somatic work in leadership, somatic work in their life. And how I apply it is very different than how most people teach it. A lot of people do the somatic, you know, the somatic work through the therapy only. Um, So you talk about all things, which is great. Um, and needed and beautiful. And then there's like people that use somatic practices, which is very different than trauma trained healing that you would do with a practitioner or therapist. And that looks like somatic breath work, 
you know, uh, somatic dancing, things that get you into your body or use the body as like an embodiment vehicle and and mechanism in that in that sense. But it's not actually at the level of the nervous system. Some people don't feel safe in their body to begin with. I mean, you guys heard that on one of my last Q&A episodes where someone was like, what do I do if the last place I feel safe is in my body? Very real, very valid question that a lot of people struggle with. And so what we do is what I call applied somatics. I take somatics and I apply it to leadership and I give you specific nervous system strategies that you can apply to leadership and life and how it shapes you um, as a leader, it helps you master leadership, it helps you regulate your nervous system, it helps you amplify your impact. So you can use somatics in a really powerful way, in a very specific way. And the way that I teach it is very unique um, because these are there are different there are different nervous systems that are the high achieving kind the kind that don't know how to settle, the kind that don't know relaxing well. And um, there is a totally different language of the body that we get to tap into, um, right? Creating more fluency and capacity for, again, relaxing, for example, because you know stress, you know hard work, but do you know peace? Do you truly know how to relax? Um, So often women, you know, like yourself, they don't know, they don't know how to unwind and turn off. So Anyway, we are throwing the biggest live event we have ever done before. I've never done anything like this. I'm really excited. We have nine guest speakers for this virtual event that is also free. I also can't believe I'm doing that, which is insane because normally like a master class alone is about $200 with me. But we have nine guest speakers. We have a playbook. We've got five live sessions the first week, and then we have four bonus sessions that are coming. So you'll have access to the replays for a little while. They're going to they will come down. So it is a live event that you'll have to come and be part of, although you'll have access to the replays up to 48 hours after. And we start March 25th. So like pause this episode. Stop what you're doing. Don't even think about like, I don't know if I have time. If you're thinking about you don't have time, you definitely need to be there. You are your own problem. You are your own bottleneck. Stop this recording. Go to the show notes register right now for the Leadership Redefined Experience. Get in the room. You have nothing to lose. It's free. And it's value-packed. And I'm literally giving you in full transparency, like, all of my best stuff. All my best stuff. Because people need it. People need to do things differently in 2024. Those of you that are subscribed to my email list, maybe you're on my newsletter, you know, that comes out weekly. We've been writing a lot about, you know, mental health. And people are... They're wanting to opt out of this crazy emotional roller coaster. And unfortunately, there's a lot of post-pandemic effects that have happened. In fact, one of my clients brought up on our Apex Leadership Mastery Academy call, which is our signature program, which is like the program to get into, by the way, if you're looking for up-leveling leadership, regulating your nervous system, all the things we're teaching in this live event. So you can try that out and see if that's something that Um, speaks to you. And if it does, and I'm sure it will, then, you know, apply for Apex because that enrollment opens very soon as well. Um, In fact, that opens March 25th. And we only open and close that a few times a year. So you're going to want to get in that room for that too. What was I saying? Yeah, post-pandemic stuff has continued to happen. One of the women said, in one of my clients, she said, you know, I I really miss shopping in person. But like you go to the you go to the store. The store doesn't even exist anymore. Either it's like fucking closed down or they don't even have my size. Like there are bare bones shelves like there's not there's no inventory available. So she goes, I, you're like forced to do everything online because we were talking about how, yeah, technology is not going anywhere, but we have to have even more energetic boundaries around it. And it comes into our lives with our kids. And like my 10-year-old is asking for an iPhone and we just like don't subscribe to that whole thing. And this is coming from someone who runs an online business. I do not think that he should have a phone at 10 years old. I also want to make sure that we are very responsible with what he's being exposed to right now. And I don't subscribe to the whole, you know, some parents are saying, well, you know, this is just how the kids communicate. I don't give a fuck that's how they communicate. He's 10. He's 10. Can you imagine if we were in high school or middle school with a phone? I was in high school, probably 17 when I got a phone, but 
but it didn't have texting. It didn't have social media. You couldn't like blast somebody on socials. Didn't have a camera even. I don't think it had a camera. It didn't have a camera that was legible anyway. So, you know, think about all the things that you do (laughs) or did as a as a growing, learning young adult. Would you want that documented? I couldn't have been trusted with that. I probably would have been sending like nude pictures to people or who knows, maybe I would have ended up talking to some stranger that I thought was like a friend. I mean, there's so many weird, dangerous things that happen out there now with all of this stuff. And, you know, now like with with us as business owners and adults and and all that, like, you know, you get scammed out of money. I had a friend of mine that was um, getting phone calls and and um, getting solicited for stuff. So like, I'm just saying technology is amazing. And it also can be like a very scary, dangerous, sneaky place, right? And I don't want my kid exposed to that yet. It just feels fast to me. So this whole like, well, that's how the kids do it. It's like, who's in charge here? (laughs) Who is in charge? Anyway, I digress. That's like a whole other, clearly, um, subject, whole other fired up thing. And this client was saying, you know, I wish that I could just go shop in person again because that used to be fun, but you can't even do it. You're forced online. Like, you are. Groceries, right? I can't get this here, but I can get it on Amazon. I can get it on Amazon Fresh. I can get it on Whole Foods. I can get it delivered to the house. And so you're forced online with all these logins and this way of life. And it's not going anywhere. So we just have to learn how to manage it better, right? Like through how much time we're on technology and what we're consuming through input, that affects our nervous system. It affects our circadian rhythm. It affects our sleep, right? If you think about light and dark, the thing that actually is responsible for our circadian rhythm. And trust me, I'm guilty of this as well. I did a spoof reel on it the other day. But if you're looking at your phone first thing in the morning and right before you go to bed, it's the last thing you're looking at and you're not wearing blue blocker glasses and you are looking at stimulating videos that are like five second clips, five scrolling, 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 you're going to have a hard time sleeping. Your circadian rhythm is going to be a little bit wonky. So one of the first things I recommend to clients is, number one, go for a walk in morning light with no sunglasses. This episode is presented by Cenogenics. I recently partnered with the leader in the performance health age management industry, Cenogenics. Today's healthcare system is made to treat people with health problems, not prevent them. And that is where Cenogenics comes in. They are the world's best age management health solution fueled by sophisticated data, advanced technology like the Brainwavy and the DEXA scan I mentioned, and metabolic science. This is for busy women at the peak of their career who also want to achieve peak performance, both cognitively and physically, using a physician-led program that is completely custom to your history, biomarkers, and needs. They've helped more than 49,000 executives, just like me and you, elevate health, reduce stress, and optimize body composition. So we not only look good, but we feel good at any age and any level of leadership. As a brand partner, Cenogenics is offering listeners a free 10-minute consultation to see if the Performance Health Program is your next step in elite health. Use my link below in the show notes to book. Here's why. Your eyelids understand and need to read the signs of the sun. It needs to read the fact that there is light out in the world, and it picks up on that. It signals the brain right through the eyelid that, oh, it is daylight, meaning it's time to wake up. And then when it gets dark, the eyelids pick up on that, that signal, and then it signals to the body and the brain it's time to go to sleep. So we are attuned to the light and the dark. But if we're wearing sunglasses outside or we're not going outside at all, we are preventing ourselves from the opportunity to help reset our circadian rhythm, especially with daylight savings right now. A lot of people are kind of thrown off from the routine. So that's number one, right? Going for a walk in morning light with no sunglasses, getting out in the sun. And the other is getting off your phone by 4 p.m., right? Or wearing blue blocker glasses at least by 4 p.m. if that's not realistic. That's not realistic for everybody, right? You have kids, you have things you have to do and be in communication about. Um, But definitely, if you can't like be off of it or wear blue blockers, like definitely be off your phone like two hours before bed. 
at least. And then the last one is plug your phone in outside of your room so that you're not getting all of that. I think it's called EMF. Uh, I'm like blanking on the transmissions, but so that you're not getting all of that and it's not affecting your body, but mostly so that you also don't wake up and just look at your phone first thing. I know that helps a lot when we do that, when Jake and I do that. So those are three things that you can do to help manage technology and the way that it influences and inputs in your nervous system, which ultimately affects your mental health. And that's the entire focus of the Leadership Redefined Experience. We're talking about how mental health gets to be at the forefront of everything because how you do that is going to show up in your ability to lead or not or not, right? Like you're you're not going to have a team for long if you are stressing the team out. You're not going to want to work at your current job or run your current company if you resent your role. So we want to help you fall back in love with leadership We want to help you dream again, connect to your vision again. And it's been like heavy, like the past few years. It's been hard. This, I mean, nobody could have predicted that, right? And maybe some of you conspiracy theorists will say like, well, no, actually, like 20 years ago, there was this one guy. (laughs) Yes. And most of us didn't predict that. Or even think that like, even if we had an idea that that could happen, that it would really happen or that would happen the way that it did, or that you would feel the way that you did when it happened. So during the pandemic, after the pandemic, there's still some residual stress. And not to mention, we've gone back to a new normal that's not really normal, right? It's sort of like, I imagine this balloon that you blow up and then you deflate it and it's not quite the same shape that it was because now it's a little bit stretched out and misshapen. That's kind of like how 2020 has left left us. And here it is, 2024. And we're still trying to deal with and understand all of the mental health effects as a result. So teams might be leaner, budgets might be tighter, support might be lower, mental health might not be as much of a priority, or maybe you don't even know how that looks or what that looks like. And I'm here to share with you that I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that in in the leadership redefined experience or inside. If you're like, listen, I already know I want to be part of Apex. I've heard you talk about that. I need this work. I'm ready for this work. I realize it's like a priority. And if I don't, I'm going to lose my shit because I cannot continue to go at this pace. This is not sustainable. Then just apply. We'll put that link below. So, you know, you have you have some tools here available to you to help help you to help you work through all of that. Um, And you know, those are some very real things that are happening right now. And as a result, people are still stressed out. And we're like left behind like these little misshapen, stretched out balloons um, that have been pushed to the max and have kind of returned to their original shape, but like, not really. And that's, that's tough. On top of that, if you're a mom, right, and inflation has gone up, So your original salary or your original income may not be covering things the way that it used to. That causes stress. It's an election year. There's a lot going on, right? So what's required in leadership now in order to be successful, to sustain success and to feel successful, to like actually just let's just start with liking your job and your role in your company again, to fall in love with that again. It requires something different. We've never experienced most of the things we've experienced the past few years. So how do we deal with all of that? Get inside the Leadership Redefined experience. Check it out. Come see. Come take the value. And if you if you get what you came for, cool. I I have yet to have someone say, you know, I've never gotten anything from any of your free stuff. We teach like you've paid. So you're going to love it. And if it leads you to the next step of Apex and the Academy, cool you know, apply. But it's needed. It's necessary. It's going to make you the best version of you. And you're going to like your your job again. You're going to love leadership again. And like, let's just start there. Let's start there so that you don't want to burn the boats and go sell scrunchies on the beach or tacos or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> you know, we, we've had jokes like that, friends of mine. And um, actually, a friend of mine we were at uh, we were at one of the kids' school dances, and she said, "You know, I'm up for a promotion." I think I told this story on my on my Instagram. She goes, "I'm up for a promotion, but I don't 
I don't even want it. I don't. I didn't even want to know what the fucking promotion was. I, in fact, when my boss told me I wanted to run out of his office, and I just thought, what if that's like, what if that was like the promotion though that she's always waited for? Like, what if that's the promotion that helps her and sets her family up for like more financial abundance or? you know, puts money in her bank account in a way that she never imagined? What if it's the promotion that like actually is more easeful and more inspiring and more creative and more fun again? We don't know. She didn't want to find out. So, you know, um, we kind of laughed about it, but it was still a very real thing for her. And when I told that story actually on Instagram, I am remembering I shared it. She goes, oops, that's me. That's 100% me. I know I shared that story with you. And I was like, yeah, like it was kind of crazy to hear her say that. But I also get it. You know, and she joked even. She said, my boss called me into his office and was like, you know, and she's kind of imitating like in a funny way um, because I don't know if he literally said this, but he was basically like, you know, over the past two years, you've done such a good job handling all the shit. Now we want to promote you to handle more shit. And she was like, I don't want more shit. I can barely handle the shit I have going on right now. And many of you might find yourself in that same place where you're like, I can barely handle what I have right now, let alone think about another level or a better version of me. Like, I'm too tired to even think about that. Cool. Let's redefine leadership as it is right now. We're going to do that inside the Leadership Redefined Experience. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so that you don't lose your shit, so that you don't have to run around with your hair on fire, and so that you don't resent your role, whatever that role is. There's just and there's different challenges that come with being a leader and a woman, you know, in leadership that has kids. Maybe that's the breadwinner. There are very, very different specific challenges for you. If you're that woman, there's different pressure. Um, And so we are going to address all of that. So, yeah, that's what's new. We also have our. Uh, what else we have? The Champagne Club coming up, which is our first ever dinner event. I think we have 30 or more than 30 women. Either most of them are flying in or coming from Atlanta, but many, many are flying in and making it a weekend, um, which I'm really excited about because this event is really about dropping in and connecting with with new women and not dimming your success and dumbing down anything that you've accomplished. There have been many times over the years where I have felt like the um, intention was to make me feel like I'm wrong for wanting more or that I'm the black sheep or that, you know, I'm too much. I'm too successful. And it's like, I need to be more humble. And like, who does she think she is? And where are you going wearing that? It's just like, fuck that. Like, this is the room to like be too much. And in fact, we fucking expect it. So Fuck all the dumbing it down and you're too much and like, who does she think she is? No, you're going to show up like all the fuck out for this event. And this is that room and you can network and find potentially like new forever friends and other women that, you know, have wanted to find that acceptance and belonging at this table. And so we welcome you, welcome you with open arms. I think by the time this episode drops, ticket sales will have been closed and link will be taken down. But Listen, if you want to hear about more events and announcements that are in person like this, get on the email list. I'll drop that below, too. It's the secret VIP list um, and put your email in and you'll be the first to hear about any in-person stuff. I can't say for certain that we're going to host another Champagne Club dinner yet this year. Maybe. Live events are tough, right? Because people have to show up and they have to commit. And so do we. You know, financially, we plan everything ahead and, and all that, which is which is fine. But it's just a different ball of wax when you do in-person stuff. And a lot of people often say, keep me in mind for the next one. Um, but what we do is, they're, you know, they're, they're limited. They're exclusive. We don't just do in-person events. And so um, the events that we do have, there might only be like one, two, maybe three a year. So it's important that you know that when we do a, an in-person event, like that might be your only chance to do it. And sometimes we want to see, you know, did this feel good to us? Did we enjoy doing the Champagne Club? Was it a success? If we did it again, what would we change? How would we change it? Um, and we always debrief from these events and see how we can either make them better or um, maybe we let them go. Like we bless and release them if it didn't work. So 
Um, I have no doubt in my mind, though, this is going to be a stellar dinner. It's going to be beautiful. The women coming are incredible. They're doing really cool things in the world. Some are entrepreneurs, some are investors, some are executives. I mean, all walks of life from all over the country. I don't think we have anyone coming in from international like Canada or over over the over the pond, but maybe next time with some more lead time. Anyway, it's going to be great. I'm super excited. Some people are making it a weekend. They're going to shoot with my brand photographer, Chelsea Patricia. She is stellar as a photographer. And then some people are going to be, you know, staying at some luxurious hotels nearby. They can enjoy the amenities like rooftop pools. Like today, it's 80 degrees in Atlanta. We still have like another week or so until this event. It might be even warmer. So when some people said, won't it be too cold for a pool? I'm like, no, this is hot Lanta. We have spring early. <laughs> so rooftop pools. Um, we have a VIP uh, spot open that someone, you know, I'm sure somebody else is going to claim that other one. But yeah, it's it's going to be a good time. It's going to be really good. Um, that's it, really. Just wanted to update you. We're, we're doing all the things over here. We have a few surprise announcements coming. I made a couple scary but exciting decisions. Uh, I don't think I have felt that level of, I don't want to say fear, but like the edginess of it. I don't know that I have felt that in a while. So it's big. It's really big. Um, and it's really cool. And I'm I'm really excited. If you could see my face right now, I'm also like, <laughs> like a little, it's just scary, right? Whenever you make decisions like that. So more to come, more to come. I'm going to leave you with that. Can't say anything more, but I'll see you on the next episode and check out the links below. Get inside that leadership redefined experience. It's going to be a good time with a lot of great info, a lot of um, experience, experiential immersive components to it too. It's not just consuming concepts, which I hate because if I were going to do that, I would just email you a PowerPoint. Um, this is about feeling and learning and um, a hands-on approach as always. So I will see you inside that. Have a great week and I can't wait to serve you inside the experience soon. I hope you enjoyed your flight and I'll see you on board again soon. Seriously though, thanks for listening. If you're ready to take this work deeper and upgrade your mind, I want to invite you to join us inside my Millionaire Mindset program. This is where you'll start using my guided meditations to help you overcome anxiety and experience even more abundance. When you join, you'll have access to my entire audio library. Head over to elevatewithcarry.com and we'll see you inside. <laughs>